the Tri-City 155. If you were like me and were in the market looking for an everyday commuting bike that optimizes for safety, but still incorporate the core things that make riding a bike fun, then maybe this is the bike for you. However, I realized as I've been doing my research on this unique three-wheeled bike, that there have not been many reviews on the 155cc variant of the Tri-City and not a lot of information available on the intricacies of everyday usage of this bike. So I hope that I will be able to lift the veil on this unique and interesting bike that I have been using almost daily for the past four months. I'd like to approach the review from my own perspectives and the questions that I had when trying to make the decision to purchase this bike. So I'll run down the list of questions that passed through my head as I did my research. I hope that it will be just as useful for all of you. To kick things off, let's go over the general specifications of the bike itself. The Tri-City 155 is powered by a 155cc Blue Core 4-stroke engine. It features two front wheels that are set up with Yamaha's Leaning Multi-Wheel Technology, or LMW which means that it can pretty much tilt just like a standard motorbike. It is, however, a much heavier bike. Weighing at around 180 kilograms, it has a pretty similar weight class as higher CC bikes, without the more powerful engine, of course. All three wheels on the Tri-City are equipped with an ABS braking system that has really good stopping power, comparable to the brakes on higher CC bikes. The left handle lever allows you to use all three brakes at the same time, and the right handle lever controls only the front brakes. The bike also comes equipped with a parking brake for parking on slopes easily. A really broad headlamp, side stand, as well as a main stand comes in as part of the default package on this bike. The bike sports two separate storage compartments, a mini glove compartment and an underseat storage compartment. It also has a 7.2 litre fuel tank. I'll get into more details on these features in the later chapters. I will break general riding performance up into two subcategories, common situations that you will face on the roads in Singapore. The first of which is start-stop city traffic and the second would be highway traffic. For start-stop city traffic, this vehicle is basically built for that. The thing I really love about it is that I can go at very low speeds and not have to put in too much effort into keeping the bike upright. So this doesn't make you too tired after a long time. The throttle is very responsive and despite its weight, it picks up speed really quickly, allowing you to pull away from other vehicles at traffic junctions easily. The brakes are also quite meaty so you don't have to worry too much about cars suddenly stopping or cutting you off randomly in traffic. For highway traffic, this bike is able to hold its own despite its 155cc engine and can achieve speeds of up to 110 km per hour or 75 miles per hour. However, the downside is that because of its heavier weight and the fact that it is just a 155cc engine that powers the vehicle through a CVT transmission, accelerating up a hill can be quite a challenge. On the flip side, because of the weight of the bike, as well as the dual wheel configuration, strong winds on the highways don't really bother me as much as when on a two-wheeler. So far, I have not experienced any engine screaming sounds or strong vibrations from the bike even at higher speeds, which can occur for some other 100-200cc bikes. Also as a final note, because it has three wheels, obstacles on the roads such as potholes, bumps and other debris that may be lying around aren't as much of a threat when you're using it for daily commute. I think this will be one of the more surprising things about this bike. It handles pretty much like a normal motorcycle. The added bonus given by the leaning multi-wheel system is that it gives a lot of front wheel stability and grip. You can feel the difference when you ride the Tri-City versus a normal bike. This provides greater confidence when negotiating bends in less than ideal situations, without losing out on the fun of leaning around corners. Here's a quick video comparison between a normal motorcycle and my Tri-City salaaming on wet ground. For 
normal day-to-day -day city riding and highway riding, the amount of leaning this bike provides is more than enough, especially in a small city like Singapore. I've yet to encounter a situation where this bike underperforms in terms of turning. I think a very common misconception of this three-wheeled bike that I've heard a lot of from people who ask me about the Tri-City is that it cannot lane split or lane filter. Now here's the kicker. The widest point of this bike is still narrower than an MT15's handlebar length. So sifting through traffic is still a piece of cake. To be honest, you will need slightly more effort to tilt the bike at lower speeds as compared to a two-wheeler, which feels slightly clunky. But that is the trade-off for greater stability. I'm guessing that this is probably due to the fact that the two wheels up front are basically working against your counter steering at lower speeds. Generally, once you get used to it, getting through traffic will not be a problem at all. To start this chapter off, I'd like to give all of you a sense of scale. I'm 186 cm, or around 6 foot 2. I'm considered pretty large for this bike, but it still fits me pretty well and can also fit a pillion on the rear seat comfortably with some room to spare. For this review, I will be borrowing a friend of mine who has very little to no riding experience to show you the pillioning capabilities of this bike. Pillioning with the Tri-City is generally a pleasant experience. Because of its increased stability, it is less affected by the sways of my pillion and provides more confidence when riding with someone else, especially with people who have never ridden a bike before. The pillion seat itself is really wide. With the stronger suspension in the 2023 model, it provides a pretty comfortable experience. Anyways, here's what my non-riding pillion thinks of the experience of riding on the Tri-City 155. Have you ridden in any other motorcycles before? No, never. Actually, wait, no. Yeah, I got, but it was like a Vespa. Vespa. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, so, comparable to me. so, which one more comfortable, Vespa or this one? <laughs> no, just be honest, honestly. Uh, okay. I mean, because I, I rode the Vespa in San Francisco. The weather was better, so it felt better. Because oh. it was like more windy. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know, but I would say the seat is. This, the seat on this is nice. The 2023 Tri City 155 has a 23.5 litre underseat storage that can narrowly fit up to a half faced helmet. Its storage capacity is comparable to that of the NMAX, which has a 23.3 litre underseat storage. Here's a clip of me trying to fit my Shoei Neotech 2 modular helmet and a half-face helmet into the underseat storage of the bike. And as you will see, the modular helmet is completely unable to fit within the small bucket. But we can still fit a small half-face helm inside. The smaller glove compartment is too small to fit a lot of modern day smartphones, so I use it as a tissue holder and a cable holder. Fuel efficiency of this bike isn't too bad. It definitely loses out to the other 155cc bikes such as the MT15 or the Aerox, but generally it ranges between 38 to 42 km per litre. I have been charting every time I've been to a petrol station and you can see for yourself how fuel efficient this bike is. The bike comes with a fuel saving mode that shuts off the engine when you stop at red lights for a period of time. I feel that this has been quite useful in city traffic, although some people do not like it. Well, I've not owned this bike for a very long time yet and there are still some questions I've yet to answer like servicing costs and availability of spare parts in Singapore, as well as the touring experience on this bike. 
From what I know of first-hand accounts, generally servicing of this bike is around $40 to $50, depending on where you go. The price is kinda capped at $70, which is the cost of getting the bike serviced at Yamaha directly. I'm still on the free servicing provided by the dealer I bought the bike from, so I've not had to go out to find a good shop to have this bike serviced at. I've also not taken this bike out overseas to places like Malaysia yet, so I do not know if this bike will be able to handle a really long distance trip and the troubles that I will face when bringing it abroad. I will be finding out about that soon as I do have a trip to Johor sometime in April. Hopefully, over time as I use my bike, I'll be able to answer these through my motovlog. So do stay tuned to my channel. The Tri-City has been a fantastic city bike for me. It for sure isn't for everyone, but if you're in the market for a really chill bike that will get you from point A to B with very little effort and great comfort, this is a pretty good bike that fills that need. I generally use it to ride out to faraway reaches in Singapore where the roads are sandy and bumpier, so it has been a great vehicle for that purpose. And having that sense of security knowing that road hazards are less problematic for me allows me to enjoy my ride even more. I hope that you have all enjoyed this review and if you do have any questions on this bike, do let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. I hope to be able to do more bike reviews and try out different bikes in the future, but I'll probably need to work my way into getting the funds to test out various bikes. So in the meantime, I'll just be documenting my journey through my motovlog. So do give a like and subscribe to see more content like this in the future. See you in the next motovlog!